Welcome to the Offshore Club's fun-filled, fact-filled, fast-paced blockbuster podcast, Coffee with Karim Carter, coming to you exclusively from where the sun never sets on the good life at a great price. And now, fill up your favorite coffee mug and join your expert and your guide, Karim Carter Clues. I am welcome to Coffee with Karim Carter, episode 34. Episode 34, it's great to be with you. Um, and today I actually have set a clock off to the side here. I hope you can't hear it ticking. It's an old clock, uh, because I want to start keeping these to 40 minutes. I got some notes from people saying when you go past 40, it gets a little, um, they didn't say boring. Thank God, but <laughs> it's a little cumbersome. So I'm going to watch the clock on the wall here. Okay. And that's going to be tough because we have a jam packed show today. Absolutely jam packed show. Some Great, great material for you. Before I get to it, I want to remind you, follow Carib Carter on LinkedIn and on Facebook, all right, and on Rumble, all right, follow every day. Every day I post a Carib Carter minute, it's usually more like four or five minutes, um, updates, giving you some thoughts on what's going on to, to help you make your decision to make your move and sometimes telling you about great uh, property opportunities. And let me remind you at the outset, this is very important that the Offshore Club does not make a penny off any of the properties I recommend to you. It is truly a labor of love. I research them every day and try and find places that I think you are going to enjoy being, okay? And then I'm gonna tell you why that's so important and why it's so near and dear to my heart. First, let me give you an overview of what to expect today. Uh, we, we're, we're going to um, have a segment here where I'm going to show you a, a property in a place where few people have ever been. Okay. You understand what I mean by that when we get to it. A Caribbean island uh, that uh, is really, you know, kind of a small paradise on earth. Okay. Heaven on earth. So look forward to that. It's coming in just a few minutes. I'm also going to do an interview with uh, Joel Nagel. America's leading asset protection attorney, which is very, very important to you, okay? Uh, with the way things are now, and I'm definitely gonna get to that in a minute, you need to protect your assets, okay? And that way you'll have money to invest in the island property I'm gonna tell you about, which is a great price, by the way. And then I'm gonna tell you about a special members-only event we're already planning for this coming spring, or kind of the end of the winter, okay? So you can have an exclusive getaway, okay, getaway, long getaway weekend with off, with your fellow Offshore Club members only, all right, which is going to be very exciting because believe me, I get all your notes and on. You are like of a mind. You are great people together and you're going to enjoy this. We're going to have to limit it to, you know, 50 to 100 people, but nonetheless, you're going to enjoy this, this long weekend getaway um, probably in Belize or, or Nicaragua, but I'll tell you more about that when we get to the end of the show. But first, let me start out. Let me start out with, it's kind of a Mad Max moment. Those of you who watch Coffee with Carib Carter regularly, um, you know about the Mad Max moment where, where I give you some of the reasons, you know, which are, you know, increase every day um, as to why you need to make your move offshore. You know, I have to laugh because I remember when I was a kid, uh, seeing John Kennedy be interviewed. It might have been by Dan Ratter. I'm not sure. And it was in the Oval Office. Kennedy was in his rocking chair, for those who remember way back when. Uh, and the, the the reporter asked him, you know, what, what has been your biggest surprise? It was right after he assumed the presidency um, in 61, probably in uh, March, April, May of 61. And the reporter said, what's been your biggest surprise? And he said, well, uh, well, uh, let me say that uh, things uh, that the uh, biggest surprise I've had uh, is that things are, are as uh, bad as bad as I said they were. <laughs> it, was a, it was a very, very funny line. But actually, when I tell you about the Mad Max moments and the situation in the U.S. now, it's impossible to overstate it. It just is. It just is. And what prompted me, reminded me of that and prompted me to want to share it with you is, folks, if you could see my inbox, it is hundreds of emails from people saying, Carib you need, Carib Carter, you need help me get out of here. Look, here's one, and, and you notice I've crossed out any reference to who it is, but uh, private information there, I'm going to give you a chance to read it, okay? Folks, that is typical. 
that's typical. For those who couldn't read it quickly enough, the Carib Carter, my husband and I are considering leaving the U.S. We have been looking at other countries trying to narrow it down. I hear that every day. Sometimes it's even more emphatic. We, they'll just say, we need to get out. We need to get out now. What can you do for us? Look, listen to this one I just got. Just got this right before airtime, okay? Again, I've crossed out any private information because I protect your privacy. And let me read you this. Uh, hello there. Do you have any information? Re good escape destinations in Europe or Africa. If not yet, I suggest that as something in which there may be strong interest, uh, especially among e UK nationals like myself. Thank you. I've received several from U.S. citizens saying, what can you recommend for us in Europe or Africa? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to broaden into that. In a couple months, we'll broaden into that. Right now, as you know, just a couple months ago, we broadened from Central America down to South America. So we do all of Latin America in our escape route hunt for you. Um, and and eventually we, we will broaden into to Europe and Africa. As a matter of fact, the co-chairman of uh, just FYI, the co-chairman of the offshore club, of your offshore club, Mike Cobb and Joel Nagel, are looking at creating a, one of their incredible uh, resort, residential resort communities <clears throat> in the Azores, Portugal. Um, so the good news is on the way in that respect. But but the bad news is the reason you need to get out. Look, I've got to be honest with you. The, the You know, I was a political operative in Washington, top political, and, and really a top political operative. I don't say the brag. Somebody said, you know, that's the kind of thing you should say in a confessional booth. <laughs> and they're right. But, but I was for well over 40 years. I have never in my life seen things as bad as they are in this country as, as, as they are today. Okay. Uh, never, not, not even close, not even at the worst of Jimmy Carter times when I first went to Washington. Um, not even, not even close, not even close. Okay. Um, and, and the, and, and they're going to get worse. Look, here, here's where we are. Here's where we are. The, the, and that's not politics folks. That's just facts. What do I mean by that? We're printing 120 billion counterfeit dollars a month now. The Fed is 120 billion. With each one of those, it's printed. The value of your dollars, as we've talked about before, goes down. Inflation in double digits and rising. It's up to almost 14 percent now. And even the 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 grocery stores are emitting. Uh, we're going to be raising prices every week now. Procter and Gamble just said that. Um, the manufacturers uh, everywhere they're saying they're going up gas the price of gasoline in california regular gas is eight dollars a gallon come on this is an absurdity this is an absurdity the store shelves the shipping lanes are broken the supply chain is broken and it's going to get worse let me tell you one reason it's going to get worse in the store shelves are going to get even emptier okay the Biden regime is getting ready to issue a dictate to truck drivers that they have to get vaccinated to bring goods across the border. Now, why in the hell would you do that at a time when the supply chains are already devastated? The Fed just said that Biden's vaccine mandate has just devastated employment in this country. The Fed just said that. OK, I tell you, bad times can get him worse. I mean it. I mean it. Um, taxes going through the ceiling. Taxes going through the ceiling. Look, that mileage tax of 10 cents a gallon, they're going to do it. And it's just the beginning. Excise taxes through the ceiling. And that's just not the Biden regime. That's federal, state, and level. Uh, uh, local. I just read the, the recently Nashville. It was in the Washington Post. Nashville's increasing their property tax to 34 by 34%. Who can afford that? Who can afford that at a time when our economy and the working man's life is already devastated? Well, the answer is nobody. Of course, the answer is nobody. Um, the so we, we you know I don't want to keep going on with that, but but the final thing I want to say is our our reputation worldwide is in the tank. Okay, don't ever believe what the media mainstream media is telling you. Well, 
Okay, Biden's popularity is dripped to, dipped to just mid 30% here, but overseas they love him. No, they don't, and they don't respect our country. I'm going to give you the name of one country that doesn't respect our country, and this is very important to you, and it helps you understand why you need to make your escape route. You need to make your plan B because this country is serious. The country, and I know some of you already out there are already saying, we already know, China. China. China is serious about overtaking the U.S., not just leaving us in the dust, but devastating the U.S., okay? Devastating the U.S. Lest you doubt that, I want to show you a book. I, if I had the very the blessing of interviewing the gentleman who wrote this book, okay? Uh, Ambassador Middendorf. He's in his 90s now. Mind is still incredibly sharp. I mean, look at this book he wrote. Incredible book. If you want to know what China's really up to, I'm going to take a minute to read you, if I may. It's one paragraph. It's a short paragraph, but it's important to you. Please believe me. It's important to you to totally understand this. Ready? Beijing's Made in China 2025 plan. That's what they're calling it. That's what the Chinese are calling it. The Made in China 2025 plan is a model of astonishing economic ambition and potential Global, excuse me, hegemony takeover achieved. It would carry China to the top in 10 major areas. Ready? Robotics, ships, railway transport, next generation vehicles, air and space, medicine, new materials, electronics, energy equipment, and agricultural equipment. From the perspective of 2020, made in China is almost potentially done deal, okay? Um, it, it is it, more than a cry for help. It, it could be a potentially done deal. That's, folks, this is a very authoritative source here. And I want you to notice something he said, which some of you, I know, I know your, your, uh, your ears perked up. The Made in China 2025 uh, major areas Air and space, okay? And I think some of you just said to yourself, whoa, wait a minute. They just announced their, their well, they didn't announce, it was just discovered. They are in the, in, they are launching supersonic missiles, okay? Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Supersonic missiles fly at five times the speed of sound and they can zigzag and they transverse the entire earth, okay? How serious is that for us at a time when our defense is being dismantled? Being dismantled. Uh, how serious is that? Well, according to the presidents, and how serious is the administration? Well, the president's, the president's spokesperson, when she was reminded of that and how dangerous it is, you know what she said? Brace yourself. Well, we welcome the competition. Maybe she didn't understand. Maybe she didn't quite understand what we're talking. That's not called competition. That's called deadly weaponry. Okay. One person in the administration, though, was serious about it. He's not in Washington. So evidently he didn't get the memo as to what they were supposed to say, because Robert Wood, who's the Biden administration's envoy to the Geneva disarmament talk said, and I'm quoting you, we have absolutely no defense for this. Oh, but it's okay. Masaki said, we welcome the competition. Somebody's dropping a damn missile on your head. That's not competition, oh, for Pete's sake. Look, China is serious. China's serious. They are serious all over the world. In that book I just showed you, he points out in 23 countries now, their Belt and Road, the China's Belt and Road Initiative in 23 countries is building massive infrastructure, ports, ports. Okay, remember what he just said in that paragraph? Uh, nuclear reactors, everything you can imagine. That's what they're doing in 84 countries. China now owns the rights to rare earth minerals. That's called lithium. That's what they make the, all the electric car batteries out of. China has cornered the market. And when Biden 
abandoned Afghanistan, he left behind a trillion dollar lithium mine that the Afghanis immediately turned over to China. So that's where we are. And unless you think, well, it, why would we, what, what impact does that have here uh, in Central and in Latin America? Um, the Chinese now have uh, replaced us as the major trade partners. Yeah. Yeah. And they've invested uh, 300 billion in infrastructure in Latin America. Now, why am I saying all this? Because look, China's on the march and we're in retreat. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to softball it here. It would be a disservice to you for me to softball it. Okay. They're advancing. We're retreating. Uh, they're on the march. We are left in the lurch. And you owe it to your family, to yourself, your family, your freedom, okay, your future, to make sure you're not the last people off the Titanic. I'm just telling you that, okay? Look, nobody is more patriotic than me. Look, I've got my patriotic shirt on here, okay? I am a Yankee Doodle Dandy, have always been a real-life nephew of my Uncle Sam, but enough's enough. You know, I, I remember one time I was in a meeting with Reagan, and he repeated something I'd heard him say before in an interview so that in terms of the Democratic Party. And he said, I didn't leave the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party left me. Well, folks, you're not leaving America. America's left you. This is not the country that you supported, that you, perhaps you yourself, or certainly those you love fought and died, fought for, some died for. So... It's time to look to the future. It's time to look for the future and make sure that you're taking care of yourself and those you love. So enough said. That's enough Mad Max. Let's. So where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Let's go to the happy talk now. Okay. Let's go to the happy talk. Enough of this Mad Max, but it's necessary. It's necessary. And, and, and you, you, you know it is. Absolutely, it's necessary. I'd be letting you down if I didn't do it. So where do you go? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Okay, well, I think where you're going to go is south of the border. Where you're going to go is, this is the first time I've ever mentioned this place, but I think it's it's absolutely incredible. Okay, I did my homework for you. Here you go. See that little red circle there in the Eastern Caribbean? All right, we're going to see there. Dominica, Dominica. I know I said it right because I spelled it out phonetically for myself. Dominica. All right. You're saying, the heck? some of you might be saying, what the heck is Dominica? It is a little tiny paradise island is what it is that I think you might want to invest in. I don't make any money off of it. Your offshore club doesn't. This is what we do for you because you are a member of the offshore club. Uh, Dominica has 78,000 people total, total. It's a little island. Um, it has a total GNP of under 700 million a year. <laughs> here's, here's one of the nice things when you have a GMP that small, you can't afford a gigantic FBI, DHS, everything else type police force to be constantly descending upon people. Okay, you can't afford it. You only have 700 million GNP or GDP. So that's fantastic. Very, very safe. Very safe. Wonderful people. Uh, the average income is $9,000 a year. What does that mean to you? Well, if the average income is only 9000 a year, the prices can't be very high, can they? All right. Let's say you're somebody on a Social Security, 2000 a month, let's say. Uh, that's 2,000 a month is 20. That means 24,000. You make almost three times as much as the average income there. You're going to live like a king or a queen or both. Okay. Dominica, Dominica. I, I you know, once I started researching, I just said, I got to tell our offshore club members about this place. And so I just kept getting deeper into it. Okay. And rather than my just telling you about it though, 
let me show you a video put out by the people in Dominica themselves, okay, those 70,000 or so people, uh, that is absolutely, you know, I, I'm going to use the word precious, okay? This is a video called, ready, is Dominica boring? That's right, is Dominica boring? <laughs> <laughs> and it's only four minutes, so watch it, enjoy it. By the time you're done, you're going to say, hmm, that's a pretty darn good place. I might have to take a look at that. I'll be right back. All right, if you're coming from London, Frankfurt, Paris, and those sort of places, and you're used to that sort of nightlife, and are looking for that sort of nightlife, you won't get it here. If you're looking for a country with this mass tourism, where you know you have a lot, a lot, a lot of visitors and uh, overcrowded beaches and overcrowded, <laughs> uh, you know, discos and so on, everywhere you go is overcrowded. Dominica is not that type. Well, this is this is really a rumor, and um, for all intended purposes, it is meant at really discrediting the government, um, giving the country a bad name which it doesn't deserve. But the beauty about it is that the people who, especially Dominicans living overseas, uh, who are on the, on the internet and other uh, media, social media and otherwise, um, hearing and, and seeing photos, I suppose, of things in Dominica, when they actually visit the country, it's a different story. I know some young people who have said, oh, I would like to come back to live here. I mean, these are people like 24, 25, who have a life in London you know, have a full life, have a social life, they go out, they know what it's like. And still they said, you know, they would like to come back to live here. So if they are saying that at their age and they know London, you know, then it can't be that boring. How could you think I'll make boring? so much to do. I mean, if you're not a nature lover, which everyone should be a nature lover, even separately from that, we have festivals going on. I mean, we have World Korean Music Festival, we have Goat Fest, we have Rabbit Fest, we have TTV Fest. Carnival, we have the Dominica Festival of Arts, we have the Emancipation, we have Independence, we have Christmas. We have Jazz and Creole in the park, which is up at our beautiful Cabris that was just renewed. The Kalibishi Bay is also a wonderful, wonderfully beautiful bay with its red rocks and so forth. Like literally, any type of food or animal there is, we have a festival to celebrate that animal, eat that animal, have a pageant with that animal. <laughs> the food, um, yum yum. far from me in walking distance there's a river that flows by fresh clean water I live right on the bay the Atlantic Ocean um, I have a small subsistence farm I have chickens and ducks and turkeys and I like, grow vegetables outside it's just to me it's it's a great life you're I, I'm in touch with nature um, I'm I like the simplicity of the life that I live there's a certain level of quiet there's a certain level of peace tranquility and, and you know people enjoy that as well. The other things to do in Dominica, I won't say that Dominica is very boring. It's just different pace with other places. What might be good for some people might not be good for Dominica, that's what I say. There are lots of things to do in Dominica. You just have to find the things that you enjoy. I know that I want to have my family in Dominica, and I'm, I'm so blessed that I was able to be raised in Dominica. I mean, I mean boring is, is a relative term. I, I mean, it, it is us who have to make a place exciting. If people would like to have um, nightclubs and street, strip bars and, and, and so forth, then maybe you should go somewhere else. We, won't, we don't promote the, the, um, that kind of nightlife, you know, you know. So if people are looking for that kind of nightlife, then. I, I could, uh, I'm not sure which, uh, maybe Las Vegas or somewhere would, would um, entertain you much better. If you like adventure, you know, you like to go hiking, you want to go snorkeling, you want to go whale watching. You want to go to the river during the day and the hot springs at night, uh, the waterfalls, uh, you take a hike. To the beach, you want to go to the river, you want to go to the hot water springs, so you want to go to the boiling lake. There are enough places if you want to go out, you know, like Wednesdays, there's always something going on at, at Big Papa's here in Portsmouth. 
there's crazy coconuts down in the south because uh, of comfort and so on. So there are places if you want to go and if you have the transport to get there and back. I mean, we promote mainly an ecotourism uh, destination. I agree that we have to in increase on the offerings at night in terms of nightlife and so forth. Um, but I, I think generally it's a place that you will come to, to enjoy yourself. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> it's just, I mean, precious is the only word for it. Uh, those are happy, content people living a great life and will be more than happy to have you join them, okay? And, and live the great life too, even if it's a little boring, okay? Um, which obviously it's not, you know, obviously it's not, it's just, it's just very, very, very pleasant, all right? So you might say, well, okay, well, if I go there, what, what should I be looking for in terms of property? Glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked that because here you go from, you know, I love vivion.com. This is vivion.com. You can type in Dominica and you're going to find this property. As a matter of fact, just go type it in and it's going to pop. There's only like four or five listings. So you'll see it right there. Here's the description. These are lots, beautiful ocean view lots. Okay. Um, normally I don't, I, I, I don't, uh, share with you information about lots because I'm the kind of guy that likes the home already there. You know, my, as you know, my wife and all about two homes in Honduras, one in a wonderful small community, the other at La beach club, right on the beach, gated guarded community, not just ocean view, ocean front, $32,000. Uh, write to me at carabcarter7 at uh, gmail.com and I'll, I'll put you in touch with Chris Barrett, the developer. You can work out your own deal with Chris if you want a place uh, very similar to mine for the same price. Some a little more expensive, but incredible bargain prices like mansions for a little over 100000 But at any rate, uh, normally I, I like the house there, but this one, this is th these lots you may want to take a look at. All right, we're talking 60000 bucks. You can get a lot there. Located at Hatton Garden, an island community um, who have dreams of living in paradise, either full or part-time, or building and renting. Uh, here we go. Here's the description. A safe haven in this crazy world. Can all use that. Um, our island community provides a common garden with multiple fruit trees, um, fertile soil for your garden, um, Weekly community farmers markets, a local fishery in the village for fresh fish. Oh man, and an abattoir that delivers an abattoir that delivers fresh local meat. Very nice on a weekly basis. In addition, you have access to the restaurant and pool at the adjacent hotel, and the freshwater Pagua River just a walk away. Okay, and among the amenities. Okay, you're going to like this. You're going to like this. Okay, particularly if you live in some of these outrageous places like I do in Pennsylvania where the taxes are, are obscene, obscene. That's the word. Here we go. Ocean view, mountain view, um, close proximity to the airport, three miles, spring water, underground utilities. Here's one of the things you're going to like a lot. Ready? No property tax. None. None. Okay. <laughs> I like that. And you're going to like it too. So there you have it. Here's where it's in the St. St. Andrew part of there's the little tiny island itself. See my big check mark? That's St. Andrew right on the, well, every place there is on the ocean. Okay. So the St. Andrew uh, um, state, I guess you would call it, in, in the uh, Dominica, um, and here's some pictures of the property you'd be buying, okay? Look at this, look at this. You like that? Look at this, look. This is right there, okay? It's within walking distance of your home. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, picture yourself there. <laughs> picture yourself there, all right? So there you go. There you go. There is our $1,000 listing, Caribbean, $60,000. Check it out on Vivion. That's V-I-V-U-N dot com. Um, V-I-V-U-N dot com. Type in, in the little box in the upper right-hand corner, 
Dominica, Dominica, D O M I, Domin I N C A. A little trouble spelling that. It's not Dominica, it's Dominica, as you heard in the video we just watched. Just check it out. You know, I'll be honest with you, I not already bought, my wife and I already bought two homes in Honduras. I would consider making this an investment. I think it's a great long-term investment, particularly when you have all these people in this country, record-setting number of people who are saying, we're getting out of here. We're looking for somewhere else to go. They are going to like this place, okay? They're going to like this place. So so there you have it. It is a, a great, great opportunity there. There's your, your as I said, your $1,000 listing, Caribbean. And you might say, okay, but where am I going to get the money of the 60000 Well, I got good news for you. And it's coming up in an interview I just did yesterday, as a matter of fact, for Offshore Club, Offshore.club, Offshore.club, um, your Offshore Club. Uh, with, as I said, Joel Nagel, America's number one asset protection attorney, who also, he, he tells you how to protect your assets, but he's pretty smart about helping you accumulate some assets too, okay? And what I've done is I've taken the interview from yesterday, uh, which is for Joel's new show, by the way, every Thursday at two o'clock. Um, Joel's show is called uh, Wealth Fortress Report, okay? And I get the honor of co-hosting it, as you'll see in, the, in this upcoming video. It's a great show where he gives away information that he charges clients very substantial amounts of money for. <laughs> and you're going to get it free every week uh, on, on uh, Wealth Fortress Report with Clues and Nagel, okay? Um, and... To show you how, how absolutely true that is, now we're going to play just a segment, you know, but just to this seven or eight minute segment of the, the inaugural episode that we, we just did this past Thursday. And you're going to learn some stuff from this that you can, you can take to the bank and also prevent the bank or anyone else from taking from you, okay, particularly government. Uh, you know, when, when the government tells you that they just want to go after the, the fabulously wealthy, and so they're coming after your bank account if you have 600 bucks, you got a problem. You got a problem. That's what's known as a lie. The IR, And they are tripling the IRS budget to send to send their, their agents everywhere in the country, including bang, 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 knock, knock, knock. We noticed you spent $600, and we're not happy with it. Come on. So this video, Joel's Wealth Fortress Report, Joel Nagel's every Thursday at two. And here's an excerpt from the inaugural episode. Yeah, absolutely not, Carter. I mean, for the, you know, I've been at this now 32 years and the first, you know, 20 years of our practice was pretty traditional. We're helping physicians and financial advisors and people that uh, were used to sort of being sued as part of their, um, as part of their, let's call it an occupational hazard, right? That, that's the classic asset protection, but we've seen it spread in so many different directions from people worried about the value of their currency, right? Protecting their nest egg from a purchasing power perspective to, you know, purchase, uh, protecting their most important asset, which is themselves. We see more and more people concerned about, about our country, their ability to travel, I think COVID dr uh, drove that point home. At one point, uh, the U.S. passport, which allowed visa-free travel to about 150 countries, you know, at the height of COVID, dropped to only 26 countries. So all of a sudden, people couldn't travel. People worried about the value of the dollar. They're worried about being sued. They're worried about taxes. They're worried about you know leaving money to their children. You know, all those things uh, play into asset protection one way or another. So it's a very broad topic. You know, don't think that, oh, I'm not worried about being sued, so I don't need to worry about asset protection. It's it's certainly much, much broader than that. Well, absolutely. And and I want to I want to point out, I want to reiterate, because I referenced it a few minutes ago, that if people have a lot of people think, well, you know, if I was a millionaire or a multimillionaire, then I'd worry about asset protection. But all I have is my home and a small bank account. Let's write at the outset here, the first episode of the Wealth Fortress Report. Let's address that, Joel. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, everybody's worried about their assets. And in fact, I would say 
people who have less assets worry about them more because they can't be replaced. So frequently I'll get a call from somebody who's maybe uh, newly retired. They don't have huge assets, uh, but it scares them to death. They're worried that they're gonna outlive their money. Uh, they're worried if something goes wrong, maybe the, the lawsuit or you know hyperinflation. I mean, I think that's the thing on many people's minds right now with the government just printing, printing, printing. I don't know about you, but you know, I last time I went to the grocery store, I was uh, absolutely shocked. I mean, uh, everything, everything is going up in 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 price. And you know, if hyperinflation continues uh, and your assets are are um, fixed assets or uh, denominated in dollars, so let's say fixed pensions and social security and things like that, then of course you worry about asset protection. You can see the purchasing power of your money eroding right before your eyes. Right before your eyes. I think right now, and we need to put this in perspective for people, folks, right now, the inflation rate, the inflation rate, do not believe for one minute that it's six to seven percent. Now, I know those of you who do like I do and do your own shopping know it ain't six to seven percent, okay? But if you go to, and I know you're familiar with him, Joel, John Williams at Shadow Stats, okay? Absolutely. This is someone you can rely on. He's never been a politician. He says that right now it's at 13.4 percent and skyrocketing. Okay, we just yeah, certainly I can certainly believe that. I mean, even the government's own official statistics, they, you know, they exclude so many things. They exclude, you know, energy, they exclude, uh, you know, food, they, they, it's just, it's just absolutely crazy. And, you know, if you look at something, and I'm not putting in a pitch for any particular investment, um, you know, we, we do broach investments on this on this show, but not as an investment advisor, but from the standpoint of asset protection. So if you look at something, whatever you want to pick, you want to pick real estate, you want to pick gold, you know, for the younger people, you want to pick Bitcoin. Why are all those things surging? Well, they're surging because, you know, nobody wants to sell you whatever good that is in yesterday's dollars. They're going to reprice it based on the exact inflation rate that you're talking about. And you know, look at Bitcoin, for example. I mean, it's, it's. I think this morning I looked at $63,000. It's, it's yeah. just off of its all-time high. And the more the government prints, uh, the more inflation there is, you're going to see uh, that price just continue to go crazy. And a lot of people are talking about, you know, Bitcoin um, going over 100000 uh, We're talking about, you know, gold going over five or 10000 uh, and these people think it, it can't happen, hyperinflation in the U.S., it, it absolutely can. If you go back to Germany in the 1920s, uh, it took two years, only two years, for the price of gold, which was fixed. One ounce of gold uh, it, it was 100 Reichsmarks. Um, and two years later, the same ounce of gold was 100 trillion, and that's with a T, 100 trillion Reichsmarks. What? By that same ounce of gold. What, what were yeah. those numbers again? Give me those numbers again. From a hundred Reichsmarks for an ounce of gold to a hundred trillion Reichsmarks for an ounce of gold in two years. Two years. So you know, if anybody thinks, "Oh, well, this can't happen. It's not going to happen," uh, you've heard the administration talk about transitory inflation. I honestly don't know what that term means. I don't know that any economist worth his salt would would agree with that um, concept. That you know, I guess the the, the notion is that uh, because some of the supply chain has been disrupted, we're having these very temporary uh, bouts of inflation. But you know, that's simply not the case. You no. cannot print trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars and dump them into the U.S. economy uh, and not expect there to be inflation. That's just impossible to have anything other than that. So while in the past we were focusing on helping people that were trying to protect themselves from lawsuits. And we still are. We still get those calls every day. Uh, but the but the bigger concern, going down to the question you asked, somebody that's got fifty thousand dollars, they have a two hundred thousand dollar home, they have they're on Social Security, they're on a fixed pension. You know what should they do? I mean, asset protection is absolutely um, invaluable. You know, you have to do something. You can't have all your proverbial eggs in the U.S. dollar basket, or that's extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. We, we, well, we need to keep in mind that the Fed, 
now prints $120 billion a month. To put that in perspective, you did a great job of putting what happened in Germany in perspective. Folks, that's as much money per month as the U.S. printed in the previous 200 years. So that's just a frightening thought. And every one of those fiat dollars that Powell and Yellen and Biden print lessens the value of the dollar in your pocket. So, of course. yeah. I mean, I, I, I read last a week or two ago when they were in the, you know, the impasse on the dollar, uh, excuse me, on the budget. Um, you know, this article came out about one way to resolve it would just be to print a trillion dollar coin which the Biden administration could do and then deposit into the Federal Reserve and that would solve all the problems like it's some magic fairy dust. I mean, you know, these guys really don't have a clue about how, how economics works. The reason we have not had runaway inflation before now, because remember, Biden isn't the person that started printing money. Trump was printing money. Yep. You know, you go, you go all the way back. Bush, Clinton, uh, yep. Obama, they're all printing money. Yep. So why why haven't we seen runaway inflation before? I mean, first of all, we export in inflation to other countries because other countries are even worse than the U.S. So if you're, for example, Venezuelan, you know, and your inflation rate is 10,000% a month, of course, you'd much rather have a U.S. dollar than, you know, than the Venezuelan Boulevard. So that, that soaked up a lot of demand. A lot of demand for our currency gets sucked up artificially, uh, for example, by oil purchases, because the global oil you know, marketplace is priced in dollars. So if let's say, again, to use Germany as an example, you're a German oil company and you want to buy oil from a company in Kuwait. Can you use your own currency, the euro? No, you can't. No, you can't. You have to, you have to buy dollars then use those dollars to buy oil. So that's that creates tremendous artificial demand for our currency every day. But, you know, and sometimes people will ask me, when, when will the crash of the US dollar take place? I say, look, I, you know, I'm not Nostradamus. I don't have any, you know, special insight or crystal ball. But the minute that you read on the Wall Street Journal that the, that the OPEC countries have changed the base currency of oil from dollars to anything else, let's just say euros. Now, all of a sudden, instead of the German changing his euros to dollars to buy oil, it'll be you and me changing our dollars to euros to buy that same barrel of oil. The pendulum will have completely swung from one end to the other. And you know, just to keep it in perspective, when the when the when the pound sterling you know, it wasn't at the. It wasn't immediately at the end of World War II. It was, you know, about ten years later in the fifth. That's right. That's you know, right. In the Suez Canal. There, there was a moment in time when the pound sterling stopped being the world reserve currency. And when, that, and when that happened, the pound sterling dropped about forty percent. And I have no reason to believe that we would have a, any different experience if, if all of a sudden. You know, the, you, you already see the cracks in the wall. The Chinese and the Russians are trading in, in, in their own currencies. You have more and more countries hostile to the U.S. not wanting to trade in dollars. But when oil and some of those big things starts trading in other currencies or, you know, you know they're, they're going to price it in Bitcoin or whatever, anything besides the dollar, that'll be the end. Not the end of the dollar. It won't be. The dollar will still be a useful currency but it will be the end of the dollar hegemony and, and it being the world reserve currency. And when that happens, you can expect the price of the dollar to fall in a similar way, 30, 40, 50% uh, overnight. And, you know, people say, well, I can't believe that, um, you know, it would be, you know, two, $2 to a euro, let's say, or, or $3 to a pound. Yeah, it, it could easily happen. And very easily, very easily. And, and, you know, I'm like you, uh, Joel, I'm not Nostradamus, but I did used to write for the Psychic Friends Network, so I do have a prediction. Joel is an incredibly bright guy. I love him because he's one of us. He talks our language. You know, Joel came from, you know, he came from nothing and worked his way up so he can help you do the same, okay? And once you get there, he can help make sure that nobody takes the money that you've worked so hard for. So it's very important. Watch it every Thursday at 2 o'clock at your offshore.club. Uh, Joel Nagel's Wealth Fortress Report. I promised you we're almost out of time. Jeez, yeah. Um, we're almost out of time. And I promised you 
that I would tell you about an upcoming um, event, okay? Uh, I've talked about this with, with the, the board of uh, your offshore club, that we need to start getting you all together, giving you the opportunity to come together, talk, learn from experts from around the world. And so we're going to start that probably next March, okay? Probably mid-March. That seems a little ways away, but it's really not. So circle on your calendar now, okay? In mid-March, um, you are going to be invited, or you're invited right now, and you'll get the invitation. A lot of information about it between now and then. You know how much I love to write to you. I, I hope you I hope you've subscribed to the Offshore Club because that, because that way, which is free, that way you get my, my emails that I send you a couple times a week. Very personal, um, not formal. They're between me and you. And so I think you're going to like them. So you'll get, you'll get some emails filling in on the details of this, of this uh, getaway weekend, long getaway weekend. We're going to get together for free for a offshore club conference. And uh, you'll meet the, all, some of the people you've seen on videos. Mike Cobb, Joel Nagel, uh, um, Alyssa, uh, you, you know, Rachel, Pat Hebert, all these wonderful people you're going to get to meet and spend time with, okay? As we talk about your opportunities offshore, answer your questions, get your comments. You know, this is a, a fellowship, okay? My dad was a minister. We He loved fellowships, fellowshipping. Well, we're going to fellowship at this three-day um, free conference, okay? Uh, we're going to find ways so that you pay almost next to nothing, okay? Um, and you're going to enjoy every second of it. It's going to be an in entertaining, informative, uh, and uh, and you're going to get to meet and, and it just, well fellowship with like-minded people. You just can't beat that. So I'm going to keep you posted, probably in Belize or Nicaragua, um, but we'll do it and we'll enjoy every single second of it. And I sure as heck look forward to meeting you. Okay. I really do. This is just, uh, it's just going to be wonderful. Circle mid-March. Okay. And I'll keep you informed. Every week we like to close with a, a motivation. Okay. Motivational piece. So this week, since we're already out of time, I've actually gone over time despite my promise. Um, this is a motivation minute. Okay. Short little video motivation minute from one of my favorite people, Jocko Willick. Okay, those of you who know who, who he is are already, already laughing because he's tough. <laughs> he is the SEAL commander. And he's going to tell you one of my favorite sections. My wife loves this section. It's one minute long. Lies, lies, lies. And the whole essence is never lie to yourself. Sometimes you have to do the tough thing. Don't give yourself any outs. Don't give yourself any excuses. Never lie to yourself. So here we go with your motivation minute for this week's Coffee with Carob Carter. Roll it, Brian. Lies. You tell yourself lies. Reasons. It's just this once. I'm too tired. I need to rest. I'm too hungry. I'm too full. Something else is more important. Lies. I don't have time. Lies, 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 lies. People ask where discipline comes from. I tell them it comes from within. But there is a deeper level. Discipline comes from the truth. The framework of discipline. And if you lie to yourself, you will not find discipline. The truth is that you know. You know you could do more. You know you could be more. That's what's driving you crazy. All your excuses are lies. The truth will set you free. The truth delivers discipline. And discipline equals freedom. That's it. There you go. Already over time, so I'm going to try to real, talk real fast, get off here. Seriously, I, I, I appreciate your coming by once again. It's always great to visit with you. Um, it's time for you to start living a good life with your great Christ in the sun, sand in the surf. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us at the Offshore Club. For more information on the Offshore Club or to contact Carib Carter, 
Visit www.offshore.club today. www.offshore.club. That's www.offshore.club. See you next time at the Offshore Club.